Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Uh, Jesus, indeed, you are worthy. There is none who is like you. You are the Messiah, and you are the Lamb. And Jesus, we come before you today to recognize that uh, you are the Messiah because you are the Lamb. You are the one who purchased people from every tribe and tongue and nation with your own blood. Oh, Jesus, we want to give you every bit of honor that you are worthy of this morning. So we, we seek you and we ask you for your grace. So come alongside us now and help us to remember you rightly, we pray in your name. Amen. Well, we come to the time of our service where we are going to remember Jesus around the table that he instituted. And this is a time for Christians, for Christians to remember Christ for who he is and what he did on their place and in their behalf at the cross, how he offered up his body and his blood, his body to absorb the Father's wrath and his blood to wash them clean from their sin. This morning, we're going to be using a passage that helps us understand what Christ said about himself. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to John chapter 10? We're going to be looking at verses 14 and 15 together. There should be some men coming down the aisles. If you need a Bible, just raise your hands. They will get a Bible to you. And if you don't actually own a Bible, uh, please use this as our gift to you so you can begin reading God's word for yourself. John 10 is a, a passage that we've studied in the past at this church. And what is taking place here is Jesus is building a contrast between himself and the Pharisees and the kind of leader that he is in comparison to them. In our passage here, we're going to be looking at a couple of different ways in which Jesus makes that distinction very, very clear. As I read the passage, take a look at what Jesus says about himself. And then notice what he says about his relationship to those who are his own, and then what he does because of that relationship. Starting in verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Notice what Jesus says first. He talks about himself as the good shepherd. And Jesus says this in a way that draws his attention and our attention to the fact that Jesus is two things at the same time. He is shepherd and he is good. We think about a shepherd and everything that a shepherd does. A shepherd is one that guides. A shepherd is one that nourishes. A shepherd is one that protects. Jesus says, I am that one. But then Jesus says, I am good. And so as you think about guidance, and as you think about nourishment, and you think about protection, Jesus is saying, I do all of those things in ways that are good, that is for good. I am unlike every other leader you've ever seen or heard of in your culture before, because I am working for your good. So Jesus says, I am a good shepherd. Then he goes on and he describes the kind of relationship he has with his sheep. Notice at the end of verse 14, he says, I know my own. Jesus is talking about a group of people who belong exclusively to him. They are his own. And Jesus says, I know them. And Jesus is speaking in contrast to the way that the Pharisees knew those that followed after them. Jesus is speaking of an intimate, personal, relational, loving knowledge. And he says it's not just a one-way relationship. It's a two-way relationship. They have that same understanding of me. They know me. They know more about me than just my name and facts about me. They actually know me intimately, and they love me. And Jesus helps us understand the way in which this is a love that's different from any other kind of love and a relationship that's different from any other kind of relationship. When you look at the beginning of verse 15, he describes the relationship that he has with his sheep to the relationship that he has with his father. A relationship in which there's perfect understanding, there's perfect knowledge, there's perfect love, and it's never ending. Jesus is saying, that is the kind of relationship that I have with my sheep. And then he distinguishes himself from the religious leaders of his day with the ultimate way in which he does that. We see that at the end of verse 15. He says, I lay down my life for the sheep. 
The word here laid down is referring to the giving up or the taking off of his own life. It's like when you take off your coat and you give it to another. Jesus is taking off his life and he is giving it to the Father. He's giving it to the Father for a purpose so he can use that body to absorb and the wrath of the, the Father has for all of those who would put their trust in him. At the end of verse 15, he says, I lay down my life for the sheep. He's saying, on behalf of the sheep, I am giving my life to the Father in place of the life of those sheep so that the Father can pour out his wrath on my life and I can act as the atoning sacrifice for all of those who are my own. If you're here this morning, you're a follower of Christ. We are thankful that you're here. Consider these things that Christ has said about himself, that he is good and he is a shepherd and all of his shepherding care is good for you. Consider your life this week. Consider how he has been at work shepherding you throughout this week for your good, controlling your circumstances, controlling the events all around your life. He has been at work for your good. And then remember that day on a cross outside Jerusalem very nearly 2,000 years ago when he was acting in the ultimate way for your good, where he went to a cross and he bore your sin so that you could be reconciled to the God who chose you to be his own. And then when your heart is ready, take the elements on your own. If you're here this morning and Christ is not your Lord and he is not your master, uh, please know that we are very, very thankful that you're here. It is our privilege that you're here with us this morning. Uh, we would love for you to greet us and welcome us and get to know us better. But know that this time here, the taking of the elements is a time for Christians. It's a time for people who actually are following the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the elements come to you, just pass them to the person next to you. But notice that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. There are not multiple shepherds that are good. There is only one who is ultimately good, and that is Christ. He is a better master over you than you could ever be over yourself. After the service, there will be some people up here in the corner. They will be ready to talk to you with their Bibles and show you how you can know Christ to be the master and the savior of all those who trust him. So men, come and serve us, and I will come and close our time in prayer in just a couple of minutes.